So today I am finally going to try and solve and finish once and for all this whole wiring issue that I've been having with the mini skid steer and getting this grapple to work. I have had the grapple working two separate instances. Um, the last instance it stopped working because it uh, pulled the wiring harness um, out of, I guess like itself, just broke the wires out of it. As you can see, I got both halves here. Um, so I'm gonna be replacing this Deutsch connector. So like I said, we're going to switch out those Deutsch connectors for the standard 14 pin skid steer uh, connectors, electrical connector. All these parts were supplied to me by FridayParts.com. I'd like to thank them for sponsoring today's video and sending out these parts. Um, you can go over to FridayParts.com, check out all different parts for any type of construction equipment, tractor, anything like that. I actually got the air conditioning compressor and all those parts for the Kubota excavator from Friday Parts. Um, that's how we started out this relationship. And again, I'd just like to thank them for sponsoring today's video. Now, I got this wiring diagram from Balmalite that I'm going to try and follow. The, the colors don't really correspond, but I think we should be able to figure it out. So you can see these are all labeled and B right there is the ground. So that's that's where we're going and they're labeled on the inside too. So we're gonna take the black and go, uh, go to B. I got this little tool. All right, that's, that's in there now see the pin coming out that side and it's it's locked in there you kind of feel it click so now we got all these pins in here I'm not sure if they're in the exact proper location but we'll figure it out all right so we're loosely attached here I just want to see that it works and uh, then we can tighten everything up so we're just doing a little test run here, and as you can see on my joystick, I have a button that was installed on the back to control the diverter valve. And when you push this button, it's going to allow the diverter valve on the grapple to divert flow from the open and close function to the rotate left and right function. Um, so as you can see here, when I'm not touching that back button, I can hit this right button, and the grapple opens up. I don't know if you can see that. And as I hit the left button, it closes. And now I'm gonna push the back button and push the right button and it rotates and it rotates. So I think we have it figured out. it easy to get a tool in there that's for sure This is 
is my buddy Trevor's truck. He's dumping me off a little half load of wood chips here. Um, he's got a job up in our area and uh, he had to dump his truck. As you can see, I got the International here with uh, the flatbed on with my sides. Got a little firewood delivery that we're gonna do um, with the mini skid steer involving one tote of firewood on the back of this flatbed cam. So that'll be a first for that. All right, so Trevor's hooking back up to his new chipper. What kind of chipper is this, Trevor? I got a Bandit 250, it's a 98. Nice. Disc style, it's got the crusher. The got the crusher chute. wheel. Yeah, you hydraulic chute and you just put auto cycle on it? Yeah, and I put an auto cycle on or, it. Or uh, auto feed, auto, auto feed. Auto, auto feed. cycles for the log splitter, yeah. yeah. Nice. This thing's been working out well for you? Yeah, she does good. Money yeah. maker? It's definitely a money maker, yeah. Hell yeah, brother. I mean, you, can, you can see it by the condition of it. Oh yeah, it's made it's, it's made not, some money. It's green, the same color as not money. It's pretty, it makes money. Though. That's all it has to do, hell yeah. No, it does great, I'm super stoked with it. Nice. All right, guys, so as you know, I've been kind of looking for a way to easily get the mini skid steer up on the back of this flatbed. And I think the ramps from the dump trailer should work well. This delivery is for one tote. The guy wants me to bring the machine so I can deliver it exactly where he wants to stack it. Um, so when I get there, I'm just gonna dump the tote out and bring the empty back home with me. But he, uh, he wants it where he wants it. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay guys, we got it all strapped down and loaded up. And I gotta say, it's almost like this Baumalite mini skid steer and uh, this flatbed were designed to work together because with a full IBC tote, you can see the forks go right up to the front of this flatbed and the back couldn't fit any more perfect. This little makeshift tailgate that I made it fits right underneath those tie down points of the Baumalite so that I don't have to physically strap down both of the ramps. It'll, uh, the tailgate will hold those in place and the machine is strapped down with four ratchet straps, one on each corner. So um, I think this should work out pretty well. Let's lift it up onto the back of the truck, see how that goes.
That is pretty awesome. Straps are all still tight, so let's go deliver this wood. All right, so we just got here. You can see where the truck is. I'm gonna have to back up, drive the machine over the grass here, through this old fence, and he wants it dumped up in front of that gazebo there. Shouldn't be too bad.
Okay guys, that took about 10 minutes total to unload, dump the wood, and load back up. And just like that, we are gone. Just got the bed cleaned out. We got one more delivery for one third of a cord. Now, I, I don't think I've explained anything about these sides. Um, I might have shown them in a past video quickly, but these are sides that actually Chris found for me at the local dump. And they just so happen to be the perfect length for this flatbed. Um, making sides for this flatbed is something that I've wanted to do for a while because the dumpster can. Um, when hauling dirt, it's very you know, uh, misleading as far as how much is in there because it's so big and the sides are so high, you can't really see it, especially if it's on the back of the truck. This um, flatbed with these lower sides is perfect. I should be able to easily load and scoop dirt with the excavator um, up into the back of this when it's up on the back of the truck because of those low sides and you can see it. And um, what we're gonna try here now is delivering one third of a cord using this instead of the big dumpster can. You know, you gotta think that big dumpster can has basically three extra sides. That's a lot more weight. And um, it's just so overkill for delivering little, you know, one third of a cord, two thirds of a cord. Now I haven't loaded any firewood onto this flatbed, you know, can since I've had these sides. So this will be the first time as was, it was the first time loading the mini skid steer onto the back with the tote of firewood. So we're doing two firsts here in one video for firewood delivery here on Dude Ranch DIY. Uh, but I think, you know, this is gonna work out really well because again, my only other option for like a third of a cord or two thirds of a cord was to hook up to the dump trailer, which is equally big and bulky and doesn't fit into types tight spaces quite as well as this unit here. So I think this setup, this can, will be perfect for those smaller deliveries. It was in rough shape to begin with. It was on its last leg. I had a feeling this was going to be the last season we were using it. I think when I got this one, it was already missing some of the bars on the back. See, the whole bottom fell off, but uh, it worked perfect to load up that one third of a cord in the bed here. works well none fell out the back plenty of spare room I could I think I could easily fit three totes or two totes if not three if I uh, get somewhat of a better you know rear tailgate figured out I'm thinking I'd like to make a steel tailgate that somehow clips into these um, you know stake pockets here and then I'd also like to address the fact that the sides um, kind of bow out. I'd like to secure them somehow up to that headache rack, but so far so good.
Now, I haven't really shown this grapple much in use because it wasn't really fully functional. Um, for a while there, the rotate function wasn't working because the guys who installed it on the machine, um, let's just say, did not do the best job possible. Um, kind of cut some corners. So um, I had to go back and fix it. So guys, I got a little story for you. The second delivery that we just loaded up earlier in this video, um, the guy messaged me this morning, first time, new customer, found my ad on Facebook. Hey, I'd love a seasoned third of a cord, um, you know, whatever. I said, okay, told him the price, asked him how he wanted it delivered. He said he just wanted it dumped. And then he said, would you be able to deliver today? And I said, well, I have some other deliveries. Let me see how the afternoon goes. I should be able to sneak you in. Okay, so we left it off at that. I would let him know. I messaged him as I was coming back from that first delivery you guys saw and said, hey, I'm headed back. I can load up your wood now and squeeze you in between you know, this and what, what I have going on this afternoon. No response. I get back to the yard, load up his wood. Hey, your wood is loaded up. Is there somebody home that I can come and deliver You know, so I can receive payment? No response. So here, this guy, you know, said he needed it today, you know, and I always try and capitalize on people that want it sooner rather than later because, you know, they can always go call somebody else and get firewood from somebody else. So I try to, you know, fit in as many people as I can during this delivery season window. Case in point right here. And um, it's kind of screwing me because I need the international um, to go pick up the chipper and swap over the dumpster can and put the tarp on for the wood chips and stuff. Cause like I said, we're doing a tree job tomorrow with this thing. So, um, while I'm trying to kill some time here, I just went and fueled this puppy up. So it's all fueled, just greased it the other day. Um, so now I'm just kind of sitting in limbo waiting for this guy to, to message me. And, uh, the kicker is he's only two miles away. So I thought I might just go over there, test the waters and, uh, see if he's home. But, um, you know, I don't really want to go all the way over there and then have nobody be there and then have to drive all the way back. So we're just going to sit tight for now and uh, see what happens this afternoon. Well, guys, just heard back from the gentleman who said he wanted this, uh, you know, bit of firewood here. And he said, so sorry, didn't see your messages. I no longer need the wood. So, yeah, I'll just go, uh, you know, screw myself, I guess. <laughs> Um, I guess that's what I get for bending over and, you know, trying to, I don't know, appease the, the customer, I guess, and uh, be on time and, uh, you know, timely, I guess you could say. But I'm sure somebody else will call for some wood, and when they do, it is already loaded up in the back of the truck. Um, so that's going to wrap up this video. I know it was a short one, but I wanted to definitely capture me doing these two different types of delivery and almost delivery uh, on video. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. As always, guys, if you liked the video, give it a big thumbs up. Click that subscribe button. Drop a comment down below. But for now, I'm Jake. This is Dude Ranch DIY. Thanks so much for watching. See you here next time.